no, Joe's mad because she said she had three assists and the all didn't get that. So, no, they just fall back. Uh, hey, I'm proud of our kids today. Uh, uh, for a first game, um, after that first quarter, I thought we really settled in defensively, did a nice job. Um, you know, I thought, thought we played really hard. Uh, again, playing a lot of new kids, a lot of young kids, a lot of inexperienced players. And, um, you know, I thought Jordan, 14 points, 14 minutes. Chloe uh, had 16 and, and uh, six rebounds and, and did a nice job. Um, you know, Jessica had a much better rebounding in the second half. She almost had a double-double with 12 and 9. So, uh, really, obviously, pleased with, with these three. Jemiah, I thought she had like, I think she had six, re six rebounds in six minutes and had, I don't know what she had at half, you know, Dave. Um, she had eight points and a steal in like six minutes. Went four for five at the free throw line, two for three from the field. She really had a, was impactful when she came in. So about the only downside is my point guards had 11 turnovers. I, I, Y'all, there'll be somebody else having to come in here because there won't be a coach alive if my point guards keep turning it over <laughs> double digits every night. I mean, it, it's just, <clears throat> it, you know, I've been, we've had, Obviously, we've had some good ones in the last five, six years, and, and I got good ones now. They just got to learn to take care of the ball. And having 11 turnovers between those two um, is uh, it's just detrimental to my health. Um, and it's detrimental to our team. So we've got to do a better job taking care of the ball. Um, but, uh, again, 16 steals, forced 28 turnovers. That's more in line with who we are and what we're about and how we play the game. And I was really pleased with that tonight. So, really good win. We've, uh, you know, that team always plays really hard. Uh, again, a lot of respect for Joy Lee and her, her staff and, the, and that program. And uh, to uh, play the way we did after settling down in the first quarter was, was really good. I was really pleased with our team. Robbie? Players? Yeah. Uh, Jemai, y'all had a... Uh, Part of the, in the first half, I think, when Jessica and Jordan were both out, and there were a lot of freshmen, a lot of inexperience out there. You guys struggled for a little bit, but it seemed like something clicked for for you and Aaliyah, especially in that second quarter. What, what did y'all think y'all were doing right there in that second quarter to kind of distance yourself in that ball game after it was kind of close? Uh, I think we just played hard after we got out on the court. Coach always tells us just play hard, and I think that's just what we did. Dan? Chloe, you got that second three-quarter to go down sort of midway through the second quarter. It seemed like it kind of snowballed from there, at least uh, offensively for you guys. What do you feel like was clicking on the court for you guys once you guys kind of got on that roll? Um, I think our defense, we were, I think, uh, as Mingo said, we just hustled and played hard then. And uh, we got a couple steals and really just ran with it. And we still have a lot to a lot to learn on offense and you know, execution and things. But um, as I said, it all just comes from our defense. Steve, we'll get a mic to you. Joe, uh, you're up 30 points late in the ball game, and Coach calls a timeout, and uh, he's kind of getting on you guys like it's a one-point ball game. What, what are those conversations like? What does he say? Those conversations are, you know, um, it's more so him just coaching to the end. He expects us to play hard and play to the end, and I expecting him to coach that way until the last second. So um, those conversations are really just like any other conversation. If we're down one, up one, it doesn't change with him. So I appreciate that with him as well. Jemiah, uh, what does it mean to you just to come out here in your debut to play the way that you did and have the game that you did out here? Um, it's exciting. You know, I can deal with this and have a lot of confidence moving forward. foul trouble a little bit at the beginning. What's it like? I, I'm sure it's not the first game you've been in foul trouble before, but what's that like sitting on the bench knowing that when things get a little, little antsy and a couple of turnovers are gone? What are you maybe saying to get people when they come to the bench, or what's that like for you? Um, when I get in foul trouble, I try my best to you know, be that energy person on the bench since I can't be on the court. So um, I'm always up standing up for whoever whoever does something good, you know, clapping for my teammates, encouraging my other teammates to cheer for them as well. So just bringing that energy and um, telling them, you know, 
it's all right, keep your head up and things like that. So um, we're a young team, so they're they already here with their doing bad from the coaches. So I'm trying to be that good ear that they can listen to as well. Played a couple games now under your belt. Now, health-wise, how would you kind of characterize where you are and, and how difficult the run was to get back to where you are? Um, I think I'm about nine months now, and it was a very long nine months, but I'm just super excited to be back. And, you know, it's it's a process, and I'm slowly getting better every day. And, I, I, you know, I've still got ways to go on my defense, obviously. I think we all see that. <laughs> but, um, as I said, it's just, you know, it's just a process every day, trying to get a little bit better. But... Just super excited to be back and do whatever I can to, you know, help this team out. Coach, you mentioned having two young point guards and dealing with the turnover and all that. How's that maybe challenged you as a coach this year versus versus years past where you had, you know, veterans at that position? Yeah, I have to remind myself to really be uh, try to be patient. Um, which I think I'll be really patient at after about three, but once it gets to five and six and seven, I'm, my patience wears a little thin. So um, just, you know, I, I have to be patient with them, obviously. They're just, they're trying. You know, I have to remind myself they're, they're trying. They just need to try in a different manner. But, um, you know, they're compliant. They're, they're trying to do the right thing. They just sometimes get caught up in the moment and, uh, you know, decision making sometimes is not real good. So I think for me, I just, uh, I'm going to have to be really patient, I think, for a while. We talked a lot about promise in the preseason. She locked some pretty good minutes tonight. What were your impressions uh, with the way she played? <laughs> yeah, I was really pleased with promise, especially in the press. She was the float and had uh, a couple steals in the, in the first half. And um, did a, did a nice job. Ended up with three steals for the game, and uh, um, so I, you know, she played 13 minutes and goes two for two from the field. So again, you're just trying to get that kid, you know, back into some type of semblance of playing in a game situation. And it's been a while, redshirted, then injured, and, and the, you know, the injury piece is what really hurts more than just the redshirt because she's just been immobile for six months. I mean, that's a long time to do nothing. So you, you're talking about a lot of rust build up. So it'll be baby steps with her, but again, I thought she made some progress tonight. And the fact that she can get up and down the floor in 14 and a half minutes is pretty good. Any other questions? Oh, Dan. Uh, Dorley was just in here just bragging on the basketball atmosphere and the fact that North Mississippi's embraced women's college basketball. What's that mean coming from her, a veteran of the game that's coasting the state a long time? Yeah, I, I certainly appreciate it. She's been around and, and has seen, uh, you know, the evolution of our game. And uh, I know she appreciates 7,500 people there today, almost 7,600 when number one and number two in the country are playing in football. And this is a, I would say we're in the south where football's a pretty big deal around here. And to see that We've got 7,500 people in there supporting women's basketball. It's a pretty neat deal, Danny. And, you know, I think we all, we all um, really appreciate it. I think we all recognize that uh, we're in a really special place and that, um, you know, that's what I consistently try to teach these kids is that it's, it's not like this most places. You're at a really special place. So we, we owe it to our fans. We owe it to our university. We owe it to our, our families. You know, I had a lot of families here today. A lot, of, a lot of kids' parents were here today. We owe it to them to give them the best product we can give them. You know, our best effort every night, no matter who we're playing against. We've got a brand that we're trying to really, we're, we're proud to be a part of. And at the same time, we have a brand in women's basketball, Mississippi State women's basketball, that we have to uphold. You've been around here. You've seen it develop. And uh, we don't need to take that for granted. And that was kind of my pregame speech today was just play hard. Nothing stands out more than a team, no matter what sport, that don't play hard, that isn't tough, that has, has no toughness. I mean, it just it sticks out like a sore thumb, and it, it, that's what people want to complain about more than anything, really, when you think about it. They don't complain, well, somebody can't shoot it. You don't ever hear somebody saying, so-and-so can't shoot it. You don't hear that. You don't ever hear somebody talk about, well, she, she's, he or she can't dribble. 
You don't hear that. You hear people complain about effort and energy and focus and, and how it looks. And, and so for me, I just want these kids to really appreciate, embrace, and wear the responsibility of playing women's basketball at Mississippi State. That's it. You do that, I can live with the results. I really can. And, you know, we weren't perfect tonight. But, man, I can live with the results because I know we played really hard. And we, we, we've got a long way to go. But I was really pleased with my team tonight. Robbie? Vic, I, I know you, you're going to have uh, you're going to have trouble sleeping tonight probably for the turnovers. But, uh, you know, Aaliyah had uh, ten points and three rebounds, had a couple of steals. Jemiah had a big night as well. What did you see from them in that second quarter that you really liked to, to help spark you know, a two, three-point game into a 19, 18-point game? Well, one thing I, I like is that I think they have a confidence level. I just think they're confident. I think they're um, – I don't think that any moment is, is too big for them right now. Uh, I just think those kids are competitive, really, Robbie. I think they're, they're competitive basketball players. I think they enjoy playing. Um, the game, and uh, I think it's fun for them. And so, uh, you know, they they uh, they're only going to get better too. That's the biggest thing. You know, they're going to get better, and uh, our chemistry will get better. Uh, so, again, we'll go back and look at film tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll learn some things. And uh, you know, Aaliyah don't want to turn the ball over seven times. I promise you, but she did. And we got to fix that. What's been the toughest thing for Rakia in the first couple of games? You've seen her out there. She, I think she was 3 for 10 or something in the exhibition, 1 for 5. Uh, you know, she mentioned the other day she just learned how to take a charge. Uh, <laughs> at, do you, do you kind of see the, the freshman wall from her right now, or what's what's been the issue? You know, I think she's just pressing. I mean, here's the thing. We scored 91 points tonight. She made one basket. I'm pretty encouraged by that. So I, I think um, you know I think she's pressing. Just just sometimes you got to let the game come to you. I mean, Chloe's a great example. She goes five for seven. She played more minutes than any, uh, all but one, and she took seven really you know six really good shots. She probably was five for six. She should have pulled back on the first one she took. She was pretty crowded on that. Other than that, she just lets the game come to her. She's four for four at the line, two for three, six rebounds, sixteen points. That's a pretty good stat line. Well, huh? No turnovers. <laughs> you know, Jordan's got some some of the similar, you know, 14 points, 14 minutes, three steals. I mean, just letting the game come to you. And I think she's just pressing. I really do. I think she's going to be fine. I think her teammates will, uh, you know, continue to, to talk to her. Chloe, I've heard Chloe talking to her in the locker room, pregame coming out, halftime coming out making sure she knows what she's doing, where she's supposed to be, and that's what it's going to take. She just, she's going to be fine. But here's the thing. Everybody, you know, everybody, she's on everybody's scout before we've ever played anybody because they know what she was in high school. Well, she's already got, so she's already got everybody's best attention. There, She's already getting on the scouting report to focus. So she's, uh, you know, she's she's got to learn from, learn and, and she will. She'll be fine. But here's the other thing. I think because of that it's opening up the game for the rest of us. You know, when you start focusing on her, okay, you go ahead. We'll score 91 on you at the other four spots. And um, and so I, I think that's what happens. Okay, in the next game, okay, they go we're going to take Bibby away. Okay, then who's going to be on Chloe? I mean on uh, Rakia. And it might allow Rakia to go get 20 and 10. So I just I think that's our team right now, and it's hard to focus on one. If you do, you still might get beat 30. Dan? Coach, I know it was kind of strange seeing Kelsey on the other side, the former teammate of players at Starville High School. It just she looks like she's really developing down there. No question. I think they've done a great job with her. I'm really happy for her. She did a nice job tonight. Um, watched her in high school and knew she would be a good college player. She's, she's certainly developing into that. And uh, really happy for her and her family that she can come back here and play in front of them. She had 12 points and, and five rebounds and, and did a nice job, played 24 minutes. So really happy for her. Always enjoyed watching her play in high school. And, again, thought her high school coaches did a wonderful job with her. And um, so I'm, I'm happy for that kid. I have no doubt about it. Anything else? All right, thanks, guys. All right, thank you all. Praise the Lord. Good on.